So the call, caller is from Texas. I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'd just as soon ask you to pronounce it for me. Are you there? Perhaps Amin? Yeah. Hey, Amin. Amene. Yeah, that's right. Amene. Amene. Hi, how hey. are you guys? Just fine. Amene, the floor is yours. I am, okay. I am so excited to uh, become a Christian if the notes are as promising as, as they seem to be. Uh, the reason I called is really is just uh, to discuss about the existence of God and uh, the Bible is the whole truth and inspired by him. What do you mean the Bible is the whole Before truth? I go there, the whole Bible, I mean, from Genesis all the way. To okay. Well, I, I was just confused because what you said was the Bible's the whole truth. And so that I thought that meant that the Bible included everything that was true. But what you're saying is that everything that's in the Bible is true. Everything in the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation is the word of God. If okay. somebody's telling you different, that means we don't believe in God. Sure, but I mean, when you say from Genesis to Revelation, I'm assuming, are we talking about the 66 books of the standard Protestant Bible and not the Catholic Bible? Okay, let's say on the Old Testament. I think we don't have to uh, make it uh, uh, so big. Well, that's where the biggest problems are because that's from Genesis to Malachi in the in, in the Protestant. But what about the Catholic Apocrypha? Are we just, anyway, go ahead, keep going. Let, let, let's stay on the uh, Old Testament. Okay, I, I like it. Often when I when I have some discussion about that and religion, uh, we need to understand first that and religion is two different things. Sure. So, like the God, can we can we just God start can we do just Genesis? Like instead of doing the whole Old Testament, can we just like let's just start with just chapter one of Genesis? And you're saying that that's completely true, yeah, right? Yeah, Genesis first. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So, so according to Genesis, there was an earth that was created before light, and yet we know from science that light existed before the earth. So that account in Genesis is clearly okay. wrong. Okay, if you start from Genesis, I want you to read from Genesis first. Genesis from the what? Very beginning. Genesis I, I just started from, from the very beginning. beginning. Chapter I 1. I, no, no. What does it say, chapter 1? I was talking about what it says in chapter one. Okay, see, chapter one, let me read it for you what the chapter one is saying. Do, do you have a preferred Bible, a preferred okay. Bible version? No, no. Yeah, we, 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 so, we, so why don't you let me read it? I, I've got my King James right here. I've got an okay, NIV, King Study Bible. I've got a Skeptic Sanite Bible. You, you get, if you're okay with King James, I'll just read from that. Go ahead, King James. So Genesis chapter one, where the heck do my glasses go? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How do we prove that that's true? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Right. Now, when we you hear that, I can that's, prove that's true. You know, yeah. When you hear that, that means there is God. Okay. No, so I'm no, no, no. About I'm God. God. I'm right. asking. So the first verse says that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And my question to you is, how can we prove that that's true? Because you're saying it's true. And I don't believe it. So how can we show it's true? Uh, okay, because we believe that uh, the scientists have proved that uh, at, at least at this point there is a big bang. But that doesn't you know, tell me anything. There was nothing but... else. No, it says the scientists say the big bang theory. I'm not familiar about it. There was nothing, and something happened. Something came up. So that's what the Bible says. In the beginning, no, that, not what the Bible says. I literally there was nothing. No, no, sir. I, I literally just read you what the Bible says. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven yeah. and the earth. The science does not say that God created the heaven and the earth. So how could we prove that that verse is, is true? Okay, the science the science didn't say God, but they told us there was nothing, and and then there was the creation. I no, the, no, it doesn't the say there was. Of, uh, science science doesn't the, say there was. I'm sorry, but science doesn't say there was nothing and then there was a creation. The Big Bang model of cosmology says there was everything and it expanded. No, 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 no. They, okay. The, before the everything, before the expanding, the expanding there was nothing. I'm no, sorry, that's not what science says. Uh, it's not what science says. I mean, a, you're 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 completely wrong. The current scientific understanding, uh, as far as if we can conceive a pre-Big Bang, is not the concept of nothing. People who summarize nothing 
in the same way that they summarize things like evolution in ways they can understand, but that's not actually what the current model, how the current model exists. The current model exists with an infinite of everything existing in a singularity forever. But even if even if science said there was nothing and then there was something, that's a scientific description, yeah. which is not what it says. But how does that show us that verse one is correct, that God created the heavens and the earth? Okay, the Bible, just the Bible, if you follow the Bible, I can tell you, you know, it's the beginning God created no. the heaven and the earth. No, but not, not no, just no, we, we, is it, no, stop. I mean, how do I mean, you know? I mean, you, you don't get to just say, if you believe the Bible, that verse is true. I don't believe the Bible. I don't believe that verse is true. You're calling us to tell us that this verse is true. And I'm asking you how we can demonstrate that the verse is true. And if your only answer is to just believe the Bible, then I'm no longer interested because that's a circular argument. Somebody could call and tell me that the Quran says something. And when I say, how is it true? They shouldn't be able to just say, well, you just got to believe the Quran. No, no, that's, that's completely different. This matter. Okay, let me say this. Okay. And you imagine, you know, I, I think what the problem which we have is the definition of belief. The, the definition of belief for me is, like, think about this, okay. How about the two right brothers wait to see evidence to fly? Or Tom Edison to, uh, to, to invent a light bulb? You have to believe first, and then you work through the evidence. No, sir. You just say, I don't believe it. That means no, just no, sir, that's, that, no, sir, that's exactly right. That's exactly backwards. You don't begin with belief first and then interpret the evidence. That is that is actually the recipe for self-deception. You believe once you become convinced and you should become convinced for good reasons. So if you want to t tell me that verse one is correct and that God created the heaven and the earth, you have to provide some argument and evidence to show that God created the heaven and the earth. But we can skip past that because verse two talks about how the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit. God moved upon the face of the waters. And then verse three, God said, let there be light. So Genesis says that there was an okay. earth. Okay. Hold, hold, Hang on, hold, 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 I'm not done. Okay. I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. Okay. The Bible says okay. there was an earth and then light was created. The findings of science have this reversed, that light and stars existed and that the earth formed most likely as part of the accretion disk of our sun. So light existed before the earth existed and sun. And the Bible says the opposite. So how can that be true? With even a phys the physical existence of water somehow existing in liquid form prior to the light, which yeah. reads impossible uh, to okay. me. Uh, okay. I hear you. I understand what you mean. I'm now very, listen very carefully. Let me read what the Bible is. I want you to see the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And I darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the yep. spirit of God moved up on the face of the water. Stop. I literally just read that to you. Okay. Yeah, I don't want you to go to first. You know, verse 3 says, very delight. No, no. It's just everything is created. It's so well, why, don't you, why, don't, why don't you want me to go to verse no. 3? Verse 3 is the verse that shows no, no, that the Bible is wrong. You can't go to verse 3 now. I, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 no. So you started by, by no. t telling me that everything in the Bible is true. You now want me to, you want me to start at Genesis 1, which I did. I asked you how you could prove that verse 1 was true. You've come up with nothing. I then read verse 2 and 3, and now you don't want me to read verse 3, because verse 3 shows that the Bible says that light was created after the earth, and science shows that light was created before the earth, or light existed before the earth, not was created. Why is it that your claim is that I have to believe first, and please don't go running to verse 3, because that might prove me wrong? Okay, you know, Mr. Matt, when I say... You know, it sounds like a religious statement when I say you have to believe first, but that's the time to think about. You know, no, it isn't. Dangerous. No, it is. Amene, Amene. The beginning of the scientific anybody. process, I, I, I'm not going to mute you, but I, be aware I can anytime. The beginning of the scientific process begins with a hypothesis. What you then do with that hypothesis is attempt to disprove it. 
And the moment that you adequately do it, you dismiss it and it never makes it to the level of theory. The science works the opposite. You begin with a, okay, I think I've created a model that might explain this. And you don't go after the ways to prove it. You actually go after the ways to disprove it. You use exclusively experiments and observation that would provide results that would disqualify that hypothesis. And when they fail to do so over and over again, it becomes a scientific theory. And that theory becomes more and more supported as more experiments fail to disprove it. The fact that your somewhat colloquial understanding of science is in reverse shows me that you're not teaching with a knowledge of science first. You're teaching with the knowledge of theology first. And that's the problem here. Oh, no. Okay. Everything you said is right. Okay. I Everything know. you said. Hypothesis. Okay. Okay. Hypothesis. Now, you hypothesis that well, there, is, there must be God. And then you try, you try to disprove it. Okay. Go ahead. Try to disprove that. And then you start reading, you know, in order to, to know the history of anybody, you have to read whatever information you got through the book, through uh, any other of information. And no, so I'm gonna, read the Bible. No, 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 no. Yeah. So if you, read, if you read a yeah. blog post, if you, if you went to Wikipedia and you read the Rick Wikipedia entry about my life, how accurate do you think that is? I mean, you are a human being. You know, I'm talking about, look, it's very important. You need to understand that. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about God. I'm not talking about any human being. It's just God, the creator of the universe. I don't, I don't believe the there's. God. I don't believe there's a God. Please convince me there's a God. Well, and uh, backing up to something That's he said, where you start with the hypothesis, there must be a God. That wasn't the hypothesis you presented <laughs> us. As far as there must be a God already is ridiculous wording, but I'm an agnostic atheist because I say I see no good evidence for a God in general. The hypothesis you presented to us was that the literal God of apparently any version of the Bible from verse one to the final verse is the literal and true God. So we began an experimental process, which if we were in a lab, we could do much more efficiently of, OK, let's test that claim. Let's start with verse one. Oh, it fails scientific scrutiny. Hypothesis debunked. When when you're telling us it is literally true from from page one to the final hypothesis debunked, thank goodness, because what a couple thousands of pages or at least verses that I now don't have to read to continue this experiment. We're done. We're we're already finished. Yeah. And and by the way, if you really think the scientific method is suggesting that someone should believe something yeah. first, then you need to start by believing that I'm right and you're wrong, and then you should be working to actually prove that. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. I know you guys, I know any atheist, you know, not only you, sir, but I really, every atheist is not. Because I think that uh, everybody tries to avoid the better the proof. Yeah. You know, we, we try and... Amene, you seem to have missed the sarcasm in Matt's last statement, yeah. which is okay. That's not necessarily your fault. But we, it, the, the point was actually that that's the opposite of what you should do. You should not begin with the belief. What I want to do, because we're kind of looping in circles and it doesn't seem to matter that every <laughs> we started at verse was, one, then verse two, and then verse I, three. I, 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 was, I, I was expecting this. You know, I tried to talk to Mr. Matt a lot of times. You know, when it comes to the, uh, the, the very important point, you, you guys hang it up or just, you know, close the, the, the whole thing. Well, we're going in circles, but this is true. And nobody's closed anything. I, I reject your assertion, sir, yeah. in both cases, because yeah. I have sent here and respectfully asked you to demonstrate that everything in the Bible is true, and we couldn't even get to the third verse. You couldn't demonstrate that the first verse was true. You wouldn't let me show that the third verse shows that the second verse isn't true. I, you know, I'm not the one stalling and shutting down conversation here. You're the one claiming that you have to believe first and then find and, and wish for evidence and whatever else. You're the one asserting things about science that simply isn't true. How long should I spend? How long would you spend if all I did was just sit here and said, nope, you're wrong. Nope, you're wrong. Huh? Nope, nope, you're wrong. Nope, you're wrong. Nope, you're wrong. Nope, 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 you're wrong. How long would you put up with that? Because that's what you're doing. No, I didn't say, I, you know, Mr. Matt, with all the respect, you see, if you want somebody to prove something, you guys have to give an opportunity to 
sort of sort of uh, genuinely. Is, is, uh, no, 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 not you. No, no, that's you. no. That's where you're but wrong. That's you don't, you don't where you're wrong. You know? This is where you are monumentally, you said, I don't know, completely fucking batshittery wrong. We don't have to let someone finish if they start in a way that cannot possibly prove their point. If you start with fallacies and assertions, nobody has to let you finish. This is the important thing about understanding the value of a logical argument, that if in fact it is fallacious, nothing you've said is of any use to anyone. And if you can identify a problem beginning with the first premise, nobody needs to pay attention to another word that you say. You need to learn the basics of logical argument and evidence because you are monumentally wrong about all of it. Yeah, Amene, the fact is when we go on to the okay, next yeah. caller, which I think is going to be okay. soon, okay. Amene... May I say this? May I say this? Very simple. We know truth is ever to be found in simple issues. You know, it's very simple. Everything is simple. But if you guys try to make it complicated, it will be complicated. If anybody believes on Genesis 1, Genesis 2, and the stuff and things, you can see what the creation is all about. You know, this light, uh, what the sun comes first, the moon comes first. That's another thing. A minute, a minute. Okay. You're literally okay. Okay, I just paused to let you just see if there was something redeeming because Matt just explained to you that your process begins with start with believing. That makes no sense, so we don't have to push forward. Let me give you a metaphor. If the next caller says, "All right, let me begin my point with with walking you through this," Jimmy, start by punching yourself in the nuts. I'm not going to continue the process when it begins so poorly. And the fact of the matter is, Amene, I think I would rather punch myself in the nuts than keep this conversation going much longer. So yeah. here's what I'm going to tell you. You are not banned from calling in in the future, but you need to call in with, I don't start with believing. So why should I be compelled to believe? Don't ask me to make that my starting point. Or I swear next time you call, I will hang up and just punch myself in the nuts. A minute. I heard like thunder. Was that thunder on your end? No, I, I, there's no, there's no thunder here. A minute. So you're going to take that. You're going to think about it. You're going to call yeah. back in the future with a reason to compel me to believe, not with a reasoning that starts with belief first. Correct. That's what we're agreeing to. We okay. I want you to agree with this one too. You see, this is if it is. Got, okay, you just cut it off, right? Just, no, no, no. You're just, still on the you're air. You're still right here. You're you're so pessimistic about all this you're still right I'm, here you know it's just my, my you know but but i can't i can't hear you my my line is not I'm not talking <laughs> i'm trying to let you finish so that we can move on all right amene i'm giving you 30 seconds because you're just being strange with the time here so you got 30 seconds the clock is going say whatever you want in the 30 seconds call me to repentance whatever but then we're moving on all right go okay they still research about the any investor any investment any invention anything it starts this by oh let me know all right I know it's just, I, I know you can't hear me and I can't hear you. Okay, I, we, everybody hears you. You're, all right. You, you're listening. You no, used no. up your 30 seconds, game. so I mean, you know. go back and watch the call, Amelia. I, I don't hear you. you that's, I'm just listening my that, Just because letting you listen, I get up if you want to. You couldn't hear me because you were talking and I wasn't. Amene, we'll see you in a future it's, week. It's, go back and watch the call maybe. back. This time you're correct. I hung up. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to defuse for a second because I'm getting a little worked up. I'm, I'm actually just uh, having fun with somebody in chat who th thinks they're triggering me or something. And, and actually, they're just living up to their name. But yeah. All right. <laughs> Good enough. I just <laughs> there wasn't there. Was, no one was making a sound. So I assume I've been hung up on. No, <laughs> my God. That I can't hear you. You, you stopped interrupting me. Yeah, we decided we'd let you just go for a while. We've already tried to... See, this is the thing. People people get frustrated, whether it's here or on Atheist Experience or whatever else. Why, why do you interrupt? Uh, there are really good reasons for it. And I realize that in general conversation, it's going to be viewed as rude. But yeah. we're, we're on a program. We have other callers who are on hold. And if there's somebody who's incapable of getting to the point, or if they've started off so badly that I know what's going to happen is they're going to talk for five minutes and I'm going to go back and say... 
what you said at the very beginning is is problematic. Can we define that? And then they'll redefine it, talk for another five minutes. And we'll, we'll yeah. keep doing this loop of re- re- revising premise one. And I don't think that that's fair or respectful to the other callers. So. And it also is because it is a show and and I don't, I don't know how much this happens over at AXP, but over here at a certain point, if I'm bored, the audience is definitely bored. And uh, I try not to waste any of the audience's time as much as possible. And usually I can just watch the live counter of how many people are watching. And when a call is really going downhill and in two minutes we've lost 30 percent of the viewership. I feel compelled to move on. Hello, everyone. I'm Jimmy Snow. I'm the executive producer of The Line. And at night, I sneak into Matt Dillahunty's house and I trade his cereals for other cereals. He comes out and he's like, wait, I these are cereals I buy, but I swear I had different cereals. Anyway, would you like to support this channel or any specific show? You can do so over on Patreon or in channel memberships. There are special tiers for special shows or for the channel at large, and it helps us expand programming as well as hopefully very soon launch it in podcast form. Now, also, if you'd like to support, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment or a super thanks, which is a special highlighted comment that you pay for. Those are fun. And, you know, Screw the algorithm. Go check out something over here, I suppose. Boy, I hope I can still put those icons there because if I can't, this is going to look really stupid. I'm going to go buy some Cocoa Puffs and switch out Matt's mini wheats now.